Welcome to RC Tech. This is Ritesh Srinivasan. In this video, I will demonstrate how we can implement text classification with Spacey library in Python. I am specifically training a Spacey text classification model to classify sentiment of tweets. If you like such content and are new here, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. Spacey is a free open source library for advanced natural language processing in Python. Uh, Spacey is specifically designed for production use and uh, it can be used to build uh, information extraction systems, language understanding systems, or for uh, pre processing text for uh, deep learning. I have put the link uh, for Spacey in the description. You can go and uh, check out that for any further information. Let us look at how we can perform text classification with Spacey. The data set is from the Tweet Sentiment Extraction Challenge from Kaggle. We would perform text classification using Spacey or Tweet data to classify tweets as positive, negative, or neutral. Let us look at how the trained data looks like. So here we have three, uh, four columns in total. We have the text ID, the text, the selected text, and the sentiment. Uh, I will not be looking at selected text because we are just looking at uh, text classification over here. So the idea is that given text like this, uh, for example, this is a tweet, given tweets like this, right, and their sentiments, right, in training data, uh, we would like to classify new tweets as belonging to either of these categories. Now let us look at our test data. Again, we have three columns over here, the text ID, the text, which is the tweet text, and the sentiment. So basically, we are actually now trying to predict this sentiment for this particular tweet. For example, if the tweet is this, it is a positive tweet. So we should be able to predict, given this tweet on a trained model, we should be able to predict that it is a positive tweet. Uh, let us now load all the required libraries. Once the required libraries are loaded, let us define some methods to pre-process our tweet data. So we have simple methods to remove emojis from tweet text, remove URLs from tweet text, and also remove punctuations. Then let us look at how we can convert the uh, training data into the spacey format to train a text categorization or a text classification model. Now the training data format looks like this. So basically we have the text. So in our case, the tweet text and the categories uh, present as a list over here of categories and then the value of each category. So in our case, the class label one would be a positive tweet, class label two would be a negative class and class label three would be a neutral. And if it is a positive tweet, class label one, which is positive will be one and, and so on, okay? So once uh, this method has been defined, let us uh, convert our training data and the test data to spacey format. We actually need not convert the test data to spacey format. We can still have text, but I have defined this method so that I can extract the uh, test uh, sentences uh, along with the test uh, class from our uh, test data set. So once we load this uh, data, you can see that in our training data, we have close to 10,704 neutral tweets. We have 8,300 positive tweets. We have almost 7,700 negative tweets. So once these tweets have been processed and the categories have been converted into the spacey format, it looks like this. So this is the first uh, tweet. Then this is the text of the tweet. Then we have the categories. So this is actually a neutral tweet. Similarly, if you look at the second tweet, it is a negative tweet and so on. So we have, a, we have close to 26,752 uh, tweets for us to train our text classification model. For us to test in the test data set, we have close to 3,434 tweets with the sentiment uh, class also specified. Out of which, so we have close to 1,376 uh, neutral tweets, we have 1,075 positive tweets and we have 983 negative tweets in our test uh, class in our test data basically. Now let us define a method to actually evaluate our text categorization model. So the evaluation method takes as input the 
text uh, categorizer which we have developed uh, the model basically the text categorization model or the text categorization pipeline as input it also takes the test text along with the test categories uh, as input over here and what it does is that uh, it actually tokenizes the text in our uh, test text and for each of these uh, document it passes it to the text cat uh, pipe which is nothing but the text categorization model and then we sort the scores to find out which class has got the highest probability and then we create a, a predicted uh, category list for the test set and then we use the classification report from uh, SkyKitLearn uh, to get the evaluation matrix. For this classification report, we pass the original test categories along with the predictions uh, done by our text categorizer. So the labels are positive, negative and neutral. Now let us uh, train a text classification or a categorization model in SPACI for classifying sentiment of uh, tweets. Uh, so we only train the text categorization part of the model. If it is not there as part of the model, we add it as part of the model or the pipeline. So we have the following model architectures available for training. Uh, BOW or bag of words is a simple bag of words uh, model. Then you have the simple CNN or a neural convolution neural network. And then you have the ensemble model, which is a combination of uh, a stacked combination or ensemble of a bag of words model and a neural network model. Okay. Now we also have a dropout parameter for regularization. So basically, uh, if our dropout value is equal to 0 0.5, then we would be emitting 50% of the units uh, in our neural network during the training process of our model. Now let us look at the train uh, species method, which we have defined over here. It takes as input the train data, uh, the number of iterations, basically uh, the number of iterations for training the text categorization model. Also, it takes the as input the test uh, uh, data, which is nothing but the test text and the text uh, categories takes as input the model architecture, the dropout value and the other parameters which could be if you want to specify a pre-existing model uh, as well as a pre-existing uh, token to vector uh, if required, we can uh, use that. Now let us look at uh, the uh, basically uh, we start with first initializing already existing model so basically we call spacey.load and we load this uh, medium sized english model over here and what we do is that if the text categorization is not part of this particular model pipeline uh, then we add it to the pipeline so while adding the text categorization uh, as a component of the pipeline uh, we have to specify whether the configuration for that which is uh, we are processing over here exclusive classes data so the data is uh, are uh, sub from separate classes. So we specify exclusive classes is equal to true. And we pass the model architecture, the parameter over here for the architecture of the model. And then we add this uh, text cat to the existing uh, models pipeline, right? Then we have to add the labels for our uh, text classifier. So that is what is done over here. So we add uh, positive, negative and neutral to the text categorization pipeline. The next step is actually we don't want to train the other parts of the pipeline like post tag, name identity recognition and so on. So what we do is that we disable the other parts over here. Basically this uh, disables the other parts of the pipeline. We only train the text categorization, the TRF word teaser and the TRF uh, token to vector. So how do we do it? We disable all the other pipelines and then we say optimizer is equal to NLP dot begin training. So this is an indication to SPACI to start the training process for this particular uh, model. Now, if there is uh, tokens present for the words, we can actually uh, uh, initialize that over here. Otherwise, we'll use the default uh, tokens uh, to work uh, part of the model. Now, what we do is that we create uh, uh, batches, sizes basically for uh, mini batches. So we use spacey compounding to create the mini batches. Uh, then what we do is we start with the, the iterations. So 
we set up a losses uh, dictionary for the model then we shuffle the train data then we create mini batch uh, from the train data okay based on the batch sizes from this compounding from uh, species so basically this compounding method what it does is that uh, it will actually uh, start with this specified size and it can the batch size can go up to this specified size over here and for every batch after the first batch the batch size is computed as 16 into 1.5 but the batch size cannot exceed 64 right so that is how we create mini batches and for each of the batch what we do is that we create text and annotations this is nothing but the tweet text and annotation is nothing but the category which is uh, positive negative or neutral so we create this uh, set of for uh, this list of text in this particular batch along with the list of classes and then we pass it to this nlp update method which updates the model uh, the optimizer which we have defined over here before is what is passed over here for the optimization then we pass the text we pass the annotations and we pass the dropout and we passes the loss uh, we pass the losses uh, dictionary to get back the losses so this is how uh, in one iteration uh, basically the model is updated over all the batches then what we do is that we evaluate this particular uh, text categorization model on our uh, test data using the evaluate method which we have defined so at the end of all the iterations we would actually go ahead and save the model uh, basically since the model architecture is a parameter value i have created a model name as model architecture plus tweet classification so this is how a text classification model is trained and saved in spacey now let us look at uh, how uh, it performs based on the different architectures right so first we will create a simple bag of words model so we call this train spacey method we pass the training data we also pass the number of iterations so i want it to be trained for 10 iterations we pass the test text and as well as the test category data so once the model starts training you will see that in the first iteration itself uh, the accuracy is around 0.63 and uh, as the number of iterations uh, increase the accuracy starts improving but after some time it becomes kind of uh, stagnant and by the end of the 10th iteration we have around 0.66 as the accuracy of the model for each of these classes you have individual uh, f1 scores present over here All right so this is the bag of words model which we have trained and which we have saved as well uh, basically we have saved it to the disk now let's look at the simple cnn model so again i call the train spacey method i pass the training data i pass the number of iteration i pass the test uh, text as well as the test uh, categories so the cnn model uh, starts off with around uh, 0.70 as uh, accuracy so it is definitely looks better than the bag of words model so by the end of the 10th iteration if you look at the accuracy of the simple cnn model it is actually somewhere close to 0 0.70 so it is definitely better than the bag of words in terms of accuracy now let us look at the ensemble model which kind of uh, combines a stacked ensemble of the bag of words and the cnn model again i call the train spacey method with the appropriate parameters so if you look at the ensemble model it starts off with an accuracy of 0 0.70 and uh, by the end of the 10th iteration it actually uh, becomes close to you know 0.69 somewhere 0 0.70 so if you look at the cnn model was the versus the ensemble model uh, it is not that much of a difference in terms of accuracy values but if you look at the time required for each iteration the ensemble takes around close to 81 seconds uh, and uh, whereas the uh, the cnn model takes around 38 seconds per iteration and the the bag of words model takes around uh, 16 seconds so the bag of the word the model is the fastest but then it is not that accurate the cnn model is uh, slightly slower than the bag of words model and the ensemble model is uh, takes much more time 
than the bag of words model and the CNN model, but the accuracy can improve with the ensemble model. Now, uh, now that we have actually done the training and saved the models, now let us load back these models and uh, let us test it on our uh, test data. So I again uh, load the models back by using spacey.load and first I load the bag of words model and I pass to tweet text to see what has been predicted. So the original text was want David Cook and the original category was positive. And if you look at the predictive, uh, predicted categories, you get the probability values for each of these uh, classes. So this is actually a positive tweet, but our uh, model has predicted it as neutral. Similarly, the second tweet is actually another positive tweet. Uh, the original uh, category is positive and our model is also predicted it as positive. So now let us look at the simple CNN tweet classification. So basically we launch uh, the, we load the CN, uh, simple CNN neural network model and then we test it again with these two tweets. Again for the first tweet, if you look at our original tweet was positive, uh, whereas the predicted one is neutral. Similarly for the second uh, tweet, the original tweet was uh, positive and it has been correctly predicted as positive. Uh, because the values are higher over here in terms of probability right now for the let us launch the uh, load the ensemble uh, model now if you uh, look at the ensemble model for the same two tweets it also follows the same pattern in this video i have demonstrated how you can use spacey for text classification and how can you train a spacey text classification model on your training data if you like such content, please share the video, please like the video, uh, please subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I create a new video. See you in the next video. Bye for now.